Welcome again as we think about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Yesterday we thought about that first one, wisdom, and we understood how the supernatural gifts of God build on our nature and are in conformity with it, the two working together. Today we'll look at the next number two and number three of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Yesterday was wisdom, today we will look at understanding and counsel. But first let's go back to wisdom. What was wisdom? Wisdom was the knowledge that there is something greater, something much, much more beautiful than this world. And that is the world of heaven, the place where we are truly drawn to, our true home. Our true home is in heaven. In the Salve Regina we sing the veil of tears. This is just a veil, beautiful veil, but a veil of tears which should make us yearn for heaven. That's wisdom. Wisdom, that first gift, that wisdom which tells us that we must pursue with all of our life, all of our being, we must pursue the eternal life of heaven. The second gift is understanding. It's all very well and good knowing that there is something greater, but how do you get there? What do you trust? Here in Glastonbury, there are many, many different groups of people who will tell you that you need to follow this path or this path or this path in order to understand what is true and how to get to heaven. Of course, they aren't all right. Well, in fact, none of them are right. But there is only one understanding, which is the gift of the Holy Spirit, and that is the understanding of our mind and of our soul, which helps us to plug in to the truths of religion, of our religion, of the Christian faith, of the Catholic faith. There is no other way to God the Father as our Lord tells us. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Of course, if somebody lives without that understanding, then perhaps they can get to heaven through the light of their own reason. If you followed the blog in the backs of the bulletin, the man on the desert island, we go through that again and again and again. But for us, to whom the truth has been revealed, then we know the truth of our faith. In our library up there in the monastery, Daman Sam and I have book after book after book, oh, far, far too many. So many that I fear that one day the floors might collapse and the whole presbytery will, will just disintegrate under the weight of them. Because you can write book after book, work after work, of theology, trying to understand the truth of God. The great Dominican, Saint Thomas Aquinas, said when he got to the end of his life, probably the greatest and most intellectual philosopher and theologian who has ever lived, got to the end of his life, saw the beauty of his theology, all of which is correct, and said, this is a straw compared to the glories of heaven, the glories of God. Because you can never really encompass the truth of our faith, the truth of heaven. We can describe it and we should, because God has given us a brain and a mind, and so we must pursue it not only by our feelings, but also by our intellect. But all of those books, all of those works, will never encompass our faith. It is impossible. How then are we to understand it? Doesn't matter if I'm very, very clever, or if I am, in the words of A. A. Mill, a bear of little brain. Well, no, it doesn't. To each of us have our gifts, each of us have our abilities. The Spirit's gift of understanding reveals to each of us to the degree that we need, and to our capacity, the truth of faith, the truth of our faith. Perhaps for some of you, there may be a deeply intellectual faith. For others, it may be to understand just bits and pieces here and there. Perhaps for others, it might just be to know that it's true, that it's right. Never spurn or judge somebody else because of that. The great saints never did. St. Thomas Aquinas never would. In fact, sometimes I think that those who have a, a ready acceptance of the faith and no great deep understanding of all of the books that I have in that house have a simpler, easier, and perhaps a better faith than perhaps we who are called to, to scurry and search through deep theology. But wisdom, the gift of the Holy Spirit, is that gift which is the knowledge of our faith to the level that we need to know it. So there's well that we can see that all of this other stuff which is out there is just rubbish. Rubbish. I can walk down the street 
and people will tell me that I need to follow a unicorn, or I need to hug a tree, or I need to go up and worship the Tor, or I need to be a worshipper of the false Norse god, or that, oh my goodness, in, in Glastonbury you have no idea. But all of that I know is not true. How do I know it's not true? Because the Holy Spirit has enlightened my mind, so that I know and understand the faith as much as I need. And maybe that some clever person comes along and says, oh yes, well, what about that and that and that and that and that and that and that? And they may confuse and bamboozle me. But it's only words, a clever argument. Even the devil can quote scripture, and even the devil can have a clever argument. doesn't mean the argument is right. The gift of understanding is that understanding that we know that we've got the truth and that we're happy with it. Yes, there's more to know. There's always more to know, but there is as much as I need for myself, and the Holy Spirit has given me that. With this understanding of Scripture, of the Church's teaching, of the truths of the faith which Christ has given to me, then I know that I can see truly, fully, the wisdom of God and pass through this world to the things which are eternally important. Understanding is the understanding of our faith given to us in collaboration with our natural abilities, no matter what they are, to be able to see the world, beautiful as it is, but only as a stepping stone to eternity, to the eternal life. It is our nature and the supernatural gift of God working in harmony for our salvation.